like this joint called something like Doughboy. That shit was undercooked. That was a nasty slice I had. I rolled out of that. And I saw this lady chilling on a bench outside when I walked out the door. And she said, yo, man, I got some story to tell ya. And I said, oh, yeah, I live the little spiritual story. That place they call the Green Corner Restaurant. And I got myself with those fucking gyros. Everybody saw it fucking talking about. And shit was nasty as fuck. <laughs> that lamb tastes like human flesh. And I said, damn, you know what human flesh tastes like? And she said, hell yeah. And I said, damn, she said, that gyro was nasty as fuck. I don't school around with no gyros anymore. And I said, it ain't pronounced gyro, I didn't say that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because she was so pimp, who knows what she would have done if I had said that. <laughs> but next thing you know, then I had the opportunity to try some human flesh. I passed it up. <laughs> I played this show up in Wormtown, Massachusetts. Also and this dude that's obsessed with me did a performance art performance art piece there. And he climbed up on a big old stack of strange chairs with these weird objects protruding out the top medieval style. And he climbed up and tried to hang from this basketball goal. But he fell, and he fell like a story and punctured a huge ass hole in his armpit. And blood starts spurting out, shooting out literally a big old stream of blood. And he's screaming, covered in his own blood, and howling and talking all kinds of shit to me. I couldn't tell what was going on. Next thing you know, the hospital came by and carted him out of there. He was shooting blood out like a psychedelic waterfall. But then I looked on the chair where it had pierced his arm. And there was a big old piece of human flesh stuck on it. it looked like a huge pat of butter. <laughs> I said, damn, son, who gonna get cannibalistic up in this biatch tonight? <laughs> I was tempted to, but I said, nah. I think somebody else dogged that shit, though. <laughs> and that's what this song's about, y'all. It's called Shrepanati Blue. <laughs>
you try to do an Airbnb down there, you just get shot. <laughs> it's some crazy haunted shit down there. <laughs> Same with Cookville, where my bad boy Steve's from. Yep. <laughs> they got the nuclear bombs and shit out on the Oak Ridge and shit right near there. One time I was blazing a big old blunt and wound up at the National Security Headquarters. I said, damn, so we gotta turn this whip around. <laughs> These dudes with machine guns ain't fucking around, dog. Get that weed out of here. <laughs> Reminds me of a time I was rolling with my best friend, Angelo Jenkins, and my dad and my little brother in this car, and we were about to go bowling. It was like this church bowling event on this army base. He got up to the guard shack, which was right post 9-11. The guard had this huge machine gun, and me and Angelo were like, I hope they don't find the bomb. He said that real loud. My dad turns around and goes, shut the fuck up! <laughs> I thought that shit was up the chain. I cried so hard, I was laughing so hard, man. <laughs> you don't say that at the army joint when the guy's got the machine gun pointed at your dad's head. I hope they don't find the bomb up in this biatch. <laughs> that ain't the best idea, but you know how it goes. <laughs> now this song's about this haunted road. First time I ever went down this psychedelic haunted road, I was with my man Tits McGee. About a 350 pound Macaulay Culkin lookalike. <laughs> my man was so damn lazy. It was hot summer. He would fog out his 89 psychedelic Buick driving down this haunted road, hot boxing that joint. But all these dead rats climbed up inside the upholstery in the back seat. <laughs> they died and shit, it was hot. He was so damn lazy, Fitz McGee. That Macaulay Coca looked like did not clean those dead rats out of that whip. He left them in, they hot. So when you hotbox it up inside, you inhale it all that carcass and whatnot. If you roll down that window and go, Woo! Goddamn. You ain't gonna be tossing that night. You ain't gonna be hanging out with nobody, man. You're gonna smell like a rotted carcass for days. At the hot box, it was some dead rats up inside Tits McGee's 89 Buick. So we cruising down that psychedelic road. Tits McGee never cleaned the rats out. Some animal came up in in the summertime. The next summer, he, he let them cook in the winter. And then somebody came up and ate the dead carcasses, cleaned them out, and it still stank up in there. Tits McGee is so damn crazy and high. He was driving down the road and crashed into this car because he wasn't paying attention. And it was his dad in the car in front of him. I was like, damn, son. He said, oh, dad, what up? I'll be high. His dad was like, yeah, hell yeah. And then it screws out. And it was chill. <laughs> you know, this haunted road, we've seen all kinds of strange stuff going down on this psychedelic haunted road. There's ghostly cars. There's dead bodies. We literally found a dead body out there. Truly, no joke. We found you're straight up sitting in a car, and that shit was off the chain. And we've seen all kinds of killers and Pevanati spirits, golden birds shooting dust up inside, golden colored like psychedelic dust in your driver's side window, and you sober as a loon driving down the road seeing this shit. It's a haunted ass road. And I owe a lot of my life to this holy road. It kind of formed me who I am to this day, sort of. Good chunk. So it's called the Dry Creek Road. It's the Dry Creek Road Blues. No drive. 
And finally we collapse on the shore to Chattahoochee and he gives me thanks a lot. And then a psychedelic fucked up Hollywood movie crew comes down with some cameras and they was watching you. And they said, would you like to play Jesus Christ in our movie today? I said, okay. They said, we gonna bring you out to this island in the middle of the flood states, Chattahoochee. And you gonna play guitar and pretend to be Jesus on this island in the Chattahoochee. And I said, okay. They gave me guitar to play. I rode out to the island in the middle of the joint. And I started instrumentalizing and gangsterizing and all of a sudden a huge ass catfish and a water moccasin start battling. <laughs> and this big old fucking water moccasin is grabbing the back of a catfish. And they bobbing in and out of the water to the tune of my psychedelic guitar soundtrack. And I said to this Hollywood cracker, I said, yo, did you catch that shot? He said, yeah. But then I watched this god-awful movie that they made And they did not put that shot in their eye But they used my guitar playing I the soundtrack So I said, yeah, I guess that's okay, yeah And next thing you know, Behova says to me He says, yo, let's go camping I said, okay So it's me and Behova, the phenom The 300 Shrimpanati rapper And my man downtown, Bobby And also a dude named Shawnman Who's really up the chain and next thing you know, we pimping pounds of cane And we motherfucking jugging, motherfucking chugging on some brews, yeah And we puffing pounds, but we puffed all the weed and chugged all the brews Had nothing left but two guitars and some bongos And we started rocking now, playing on the instruments It was pitch black the middle of the night And then two miles deep in the wilderness, all of a sudden Some police show up with lights and they say, yo, you guys are drinking beers here on PGA property. We gonna bust you now. <laughs> These popos have been sitting out in the fucking woods and spying on us for hours. They say, I, I said, that's real creepy, man. That's fucked up. Yeah, we could be dead. And he said, what you got? I said, all I got to them people because I already burned all my ganja cheese. <laughs> and he said, damn, well, you got some empty brew care, so you best chill with ease. He said, I'm going to search all y'all. He found some blunt wraps and be over the phenom's pocket. And there was a long pause where we all thought we was going to jail. And then he said, see ya! I puffed cigars too. <laughs> and then he gave him back the blunt wraps and he rolled out with this strange, strong arm man. And they said, by the way, whoever was playing the bongos did a mighty fine job. <laughs> and I said, that was me on the bongos, man. And then they rolled out into the darkness and we thought for a while. And then realized that they could have been some fucked up rednecks just screwing with us, oh yeah. But we'll never know, man. You know what I'm saying? That all happened on the side of this spiritual mountain. That's called the Big Frog Mountain. Take a few puffs, then you 
You know what I mean? I figured it was going to be crazy, though. <laughs> you know, San Francisco is a real nice place. I like it a lot up in here. Let me retune this bad boy real quick. I knew it would be crazy. I knew no details. <laughs> That's the way I like to do it. <laughs> I think that's the way you like to do it too, so. Let's see what's up next, yeah. Let's see what's next. Uh, how about, uh... Quartz Blues! Quartz Blues, okay. Woo! <laughs> I was hoping you would ask for some, uh, spiritual requests. It's been a minute since I played this, so I might forget something, but I don't think I will. side of the holy little Tallapoosa River. Many haunted spirits roll through there. Many psychedelic vibes flow through that ground. It's made of pure Kurtz, pure quartz crystal. That holy ground, yeah. And that's why this joint's called the Holy Quartz Blue. Thinking about those beautiful round eyes Sitting there looking at the setting sun And wondering where you'll bide your time Oh, you're so far away Deep in those blue ridge hills
deep, dig deep in between these snapping turtles, grabbing my crock from the mud underneath. I came back up and it was off the chain. Didn't get snapped. But I did hear about that guy that got his weenie snapped off by the same snapping turtle that I was chilling with. That guy works for Better Homes and Gardens magazine. He ain't got no weenie no more. That motherfucker snapped it off. So next thing you know, we're chilling with that guy who's now got these mental problems. And we're riding around and he's driving us on these four-wheelers and shit. And they're jumping and doing flips and stuff. It was insane, man. I wasn't in it when it did the flip, thank God. But so we're just kicking it with Demon Christ. And that shit was fucking insane, y'all. Better Homes and Gardens magazine. That shit is not off the chain. In fact, that's about as honky as it gets. And that's what this joint's about. The psychedelic shit you see driving down the road. Like that holy Sasquatch and that spiritual UFO. Or maybe a nude, like, old lady or something. You know that shit's off the chain. It's called the Moses Lake motherfucking blizzards, right?
There's assless chaps. Are there crotchless chaps? <laughs> yeah. Pubeless chaps. Pub yeah, pube chaps. Yeah. Pube chaps. Yeah. We'll make it happen. This one's dedicated to you, my man. The okay. pube chaps. <laughs> the pube chap blue. I'm going to be fucking pube chap. <laughs> we'll all get pube chaps after this, y'all. Right. Yo, what's going down after this? Is there an after party or something? Or? I don't know. We can go it's and in the party. hotel lobby. And after that, you're right, exactly. You gotta leave the party, take it to the room, and pew with somebody. And pew with somebody, that's <laughs> yeah. right. That's right. Say a friend, we all toss in the night. <laughs> yeah. So, this is a new song, it's the most recent song I wrote, man. It's about me chilling on top of a haunted mountaintop in Vermont, seeing a Mennonite ghost. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that Mennonite ghost. Me and like eight other people, young ladies, old dudes, all types of people up on top of this haunted mountain in frostbitten conditions. I sensed a psychedelic vibe, heard a psychedelic noise, I looked over. The girl from Burlington and her dad next to me. She made this crazy face, I said, what's up? She said, I just saw a Mennonite ghost. I said, damn. Next thing you know, from the outhouse way down the way, I see this like 1800s woman come out. Me and everybody else saw this shit. She walked deep into the woods wearing like this 1800s garb, straight Mennonite. This jock ass motherfucker I was chilling with. I don't believe in ghosts. He ran into the woods trying to chase her. She wasn't there. She's a fucking ghost. <laughs> he howled in every direction. There was no path. She just simply walked into this frostbitten mountaintop woods. Disappeared into the wilderness. There was nobody there. She was a fucking Mennonite ghost. About an hour later, this beautiful 
beautiful Dutch lady comes rolling up. She said, yo, you know the story of this haunted mountaintop? And I said, you know, I don't. I don't know the story of this haunted mountaintop. I knew it was haunted, though. My boy had told me about it. She said, well, ten hikers have disappeared off the top of this mountain. Ten different occurrences in the past hundred years. It's called the Bennington Triangle. It's centered around this holy mountain, Mount Glastonbury, up in Vermont. It's been mad Sasquatch sightings and UFOs. Lots of disappearances. All kinds of crazy shit happened that day. And that's what this holy song's about, y'all. It's called Ying Yang Fella. Snake sitting on his plate. Gave a little thanks, man. 
spread a little love with those spiritual sun rays coming from above. Sand Mountain Blues, babe, Sand Mountain Blues. Sand Mountain Blues. Went up on Sand Mountain to burn a couple pounds. Ain't talking about Besides, about that weed is blowing around. Got up through that peak, man. But if it white rock stands still, said what up to the spirits they, cause I know they love to chill. Sand Mountain Blues, babe, Sand Mountain Blues. Sand Mountain Blues. Went up on just to get some peace Everybody got some shit that needs to be released If you go up there, man Remember just one thing It's your job to spread that vibe Like that holy mountain spring Sand Mountain Blues, babe Sand Mountain Blues Sand Mountain Go psychedelic Airbnb, what up? <laughs> Let me retune. Say it again? No, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Traditional pimp, is that what you said? It's traditional pimp. <laughs> yeah. So this last song is called Nighttime Drives. It's about taking some nighttime drives in some spiritual mountains and whatnot. Down in East Tennessee, kind of near where my man Steve used to chill, but he was in Central. Now I went out to Central Tennessee and I was tripping on shrooms up in Nash, Vegas. And that shit was pretty nuts. I ain't spent much time there, yeah. but you been to Betty's, that place? Betty's? Yeah. Betty's Grill? That's a tight spot. There's a lot of burnout country musicians yeah. up in that joint. They came to Nashville to make it big and they blew. And so now they guzzle up inside Betty's Grill and sit there. And everybody comes through and plays psychedelic tunes and, you know, like uplifts each other and shit. It's pretty tight. It's like the burnout shrimp and uh, Nash Vegas spot. Overpriced hamburgers, but all you can drink if you're playing Natty Light, so you know that's off the chain. <laughs> <laughs> My man Tarvo's the bartender that you probably met him before. He's like the bartender. He's, like, right. He's posted up in there, kind of like I'm going to be posted up in Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> crack dealer named Big Dre was chilling with me, standing over me while I was asleep. I woke up, he said, you want some of them perks? I said, I'm, I'm good on that. I like those uppers, though. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He was like, I got that. You fuck around with that girl? I said, hell yeah. He said, I got some of that hard right now. I said, damn, that's off the chain. My boy actually the night before was trying to score some crap rocks, so I went and got him. He didn't want to buy him that morning. I guess he had just woken up. He wasn't in the mood to buy some hard rocks. So Big Dave, Big Drake cruised out, but he was off the chain. I chilled with him for a while, talked and stuff. He would get he had a big old pistol on the We were kicking it in the backyard of this squat house. He was kicking it pretty deep, and it kind of reminded me of this psychedelic gangster named Little Howlin' Wolf. Y'all know about him? Legendary dude up in Chi-Town, Little Howlin' Wolf. It 
also reminds me of all kinds of psychedelic things. It reminds me of my trip to Vegas two nights ago. The Circus Circus Casino. I bought a bad sack of weed from this lady. Five dollars walking in the hotel. Huge sack. Tasted like cinnamon. What's cinnamon? I don't know. I know some weird shit up inside that weed. <laughs> I popped two joints up in the bathroom. And I felt a little strange. <laughs> But then today I was kicking at my boy's property and picked some weed straight up the vine and puffed that shit. It was a little wet, but I still got high as hell. I said, damn, Cali is the jam. <laughs> and I love it here, man. I'm going to be here for like two months. So it literally Airbnb, if you're trying to hire me for some gangsta shit, holla at your boy. <laughs> but you know, tomorrow I'm cruising up to Northern Cali to play at my man Tracy Trance's land. The Savage Young Tater Bug. Everybody's gonna be out there. It's gonna be fucking off the chain. We're gonna puff so much weed, man. Y'all ain't even gonna know what my name is by the end of that night. But you know, it finally makes me think about the Creole Mafia. Now, the Creole Mafia, I was on a tour with Tracy Trance and the Savage Young Caterbug going down the whole East Coast. We were supposed to come out west two years ago. The Creole Mafia sort of sabotaged our tour. Our car broke down, this big old bus, 60s bus, broke down in front of an abandoned boiled peanut shack. And that's where the Cajuns and the Creoles were storing bodies and money and shit up inside these abandoned coolers and shit. <laughs> and we found that shit. We didn't see the bodies, but we knew they was there. All of a sudden, a Creole pimp comes rolling up with a gold grill and a pistol gun. <laughs> Staring at us, demonic red eyes, shooting out of his head. And I'm just like, oh my god, this dude's about to shoot us. Creole Mafia. So we got the car towed, he didn't shoot us. Then we ended up staying at this psychedelic motel called the Micanopy Inn. It's haunted as a motherfucker. John Wayne Gacy used to hang out in the laundry room there. He tagged the wall. And little Helen Wolf. My friend Little Hallam Wolf is actually the guy who officially captured John Wayne Gacy in Chicago way back in the day in the suburbs. He also teamed up with Mr. T and went down to Atlanta to catch a child molester. And I'm not even fucking around, he actually did that shit. <laughs> He's got a full spread in People Magazine, like June of 89, Princess Diana on the cover. He's in a full spread, he's got a whole page to himself talking about how he's Ronald Reagan's spiritual advisor and shit like that. You can look it up on the internet or see it in real life, a little Howlin' Wolf's wolf shack in the back of an abandoned bank in West Baltimore. You know that shit is off the chain. Wait, that, the dude's fucking all purple, like, wore crazy shit? Spiritual advisor to Ronald Reagan, that oh, dude? Hell yeah. I fucking know that dude. That's a little Howlin', that's my bad boy. I went on a, like, four-week tour with him. He was telling all kinds of bad jokes and some Indian pimp threw a fucking can at his head. I said, you, you know that shit's off the chain. Fuck you, you racist fuck! And he launched this can at him and bounced it off his head. Well, where'd you meet little Al? No, 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 I didn't meet him. I just know who you're talking about. That guy's crazy. That's my boy, like, for real. But he's fucked. He's really fucked up, but he's amazing. Very inspirational and legendary and spiritual. He's a shamanistic pimp. For real, man. But anyway, so the Creole Mafia is coming after us. We have to make an OP in. We get in the van, the exhaust starts pumping into this old 90-year-old man's room who's riding this Creole automobile. And he comes like, get your fucking van out of here! And starts slamming my boy with his walker and shit. <laughs> then we go to this diner called the Piper Cup. Then we go and chill out with these fucking crazy redneck white trash pimps up in a psychedelic trailer. And they guzzling twisted tea. <laughs> Then we got in the car and they put the baby in the front seat, uh, like a newborn baby without a car seat, like sitting in the front seat of this fucked up 60s van while we were fogging it out and snorting crazy powders and shit. Now the Creole Mafia didn't get us. And that brings me to my final tale. I was up in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I played a show. A guy named Sam Dubois was there. He was a gangster dude, this like white French gangster. Sam Dubois. And he had a rural country accent, Sam Dubois. And he was snorting all kinds of drugs off of Frisbee. <laughs> he had that coke, he had them pills, he had all kinds of shit. 
snorting all, mixing all up on this frisbee. Sam Dubois. He said, well, I'm not going to be here for the show. I'm going to have sex on a skyscraper <laughs> down in Nashville. I said, okay. <laughs> Peace, dude. Now, I woke up the next morning to Sam Dubois. He said, hey, hey, man, I got a favor to ask. A few minutes, my friend's gonna come in here with a bunch of pounds of weed and money. A few minutes later, another friend of mine's gonna come in with the AK and a ski man. We're, we're, we're basically making this fake robbery. And he's setting up one of his friends to rob the other friend. He said, Would you lay down on the couch, pretend you're asleep, make it seem more realistic? I told him not to load the AK. I said, fuck no. <laughs> well, for your troubles, after the robbery, we'll all go down to the guitar center. I'll get you a bunch of gear. <laughs> nah, man. Nah, I'm tempted, but nah. I rolled out of there. Next time I came back, Sam Dubois was nowhere to be seen. Motherfucker got that robbery. He pieced out of town. He went to the Guitar Center. God knows when he purchased that. <laughs> That's what the name of this psychedelic song is. It's called Late Night Drives. Actually, it's called Nighttime Drives. And it's about what you would imagine, some psychedelic and spiritual nighttime drives. Holy San Francisco psychedelic Airbnb. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's party all night, y'all. The hurricane is up in town. And this last tune is called Nighttime Drives Here.
right there. That's big money. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks, Stuffy Day, man. Pump to the motherfucking brim, y'all. Now let's get crunk and party down. <laughs> 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 Who got that ganja cheese and that no candy? <laughs>